Very pleasant good afternoon, Namaskar and Salam to all of you out there and welcome to our regular program here every Saturday afternoon on MTV Indian Arts and Culture brought to you through the kind courtesy of the Indian Rival Committee IAC and of course with me this afternoon in our studios and we want to talk a little bit this this afternoon about Ramadan last week um, our brother Raven Aziz he was he, he also spoke a bit as Ramadan commenced and he talked a little about Ramadan but as we are in the month of Ramadan the Indian Rival Committee takes pleasure in speaking and educating our public on this this topic this month and exactly what we what we are supposed to do or um, during the during the course of Ramadan and with me is my little brother very firstly here Saeed Muhammad Akid and Maulana Saeed Muhammad Tazdik uh, both are from Bangalore and they're in Guyana here um, so we took the opportunity to have them on our program and to speak a little bit on Ramadan so before we talk um, all the technical details as to you know what exactly Ramadan is and, and what do you do because I'm quite sure for Muslims everybody out there would have already know what Ramadan is and what you have to do but for the public also it's it's also good to know about others culture other other form of the Indian culture not just you know the, the dance and the music and and the you know the the rest that we spoke about earlier in the programs but also to know about the, the heritage and the tradition and also the educational aspect but let me um, ask our brother here he to recite a few verses from the Holy Quran and he is reciting I, I'm telling you because you can't see I'm seeing so he's reciting in Arabic Assalamu alaikum A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyam kama kutiba ala al-lazina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon أياما معدودات فمن كان منكم مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر وعلى الذين يطيقونه فضية طعام مسكين فمن تتوع خيرا فهو خير له وأن تسوموا خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفن فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسرى ولا يريد بكم العسرى ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب الدعوة الداء إذا دعاني فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمن بي لعلهم يرشدون صدق الله العلي العظيم Okay, that's it. Uh, very good. I mean, I'm quite sure lots of us out there, I mean, who, who, not, who do not know Arabic will not be able to, to explain or to understand what he said. But honestly, listening to him sitting right next to his dad, his father here, Maulana himself, from Bangalore, as I've said earlier, I mean, you can feel and you can understand that, you know, of, of course I know for something, some, some, quite sure, I'm quite, sh I'm quite sure parts of that were talking about Ramadan and the month and what you have to do. So, I mean, that is my, my basic understanding by just, uh, you know, listening very keenly. But Maulana here will tell us a little bit more about, about what was recited just now, firstly, and I'll, I'll ask the first question about exactly what do you do in the month of Ramadan? Everybody know fasting, but tell us a little bit about the fasting and the type of fasting. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem, bismillahir rahmanir rahim, wa bihi nasta'een, innahu khayru nasirin wa mu'een. Qala Allahu al-Hakim fi kitabihi al-Kareem, bismillahir rahmanir rahim, ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum al-siyam, kama kutiba ala al-ladheena min qablikum, la'allakum tattaqoon. First of all, I extend my uh, greetings to all our viewers, whether Muslims or non-Muslims, uh, who are already in the month of Ramadan, in the month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the Quran, in the month in which we Muslims uh, will keep fast and we benefit from it. And uh, normally we pay more attention to our religious uh, responsibilities 
and also we pray uh, some extra nawafil and uh, we recite the Holy Quran. First, uh, I want to explain what uh, the little uh, aqid recited the Quran. Uh, this basically relating to the month of the Ramadan and the fasting in the month of Ramadan. First, it says, Ya ayu alladhina amanu kutiba alaykum usiyam. The fasting, all who you believe, the fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for the nations before you. And la'allakum tattaqun. Meaning the purpose of fasting was the taqwa and you may attain the piety out of it. And then it talks about uh, if you are uh, sick or if you are a traveler, you are exemption from fasting, you no need to fast, but you have to make it over after the month of Ramadan, whenever you get rid of the uh, sickness and you are not uh, uh, in journey anymore. Then it talks about the persons who are uh, very old and they can't make to fast, they can't resist. For them, it's a little bit penalty. It's not a penalty, it's the, they have to give something in charity. That is okay. called the fidya. Okay. So this talk about this and then uh, talk that you have to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the, how you uh, witness the month of Ramadan uh, what, as you cite the crescent, not the new moon. As you cite the crescent, mm -hmm. then you start your month of Ramadan. You have to start your fasting. Okay. Then as you cite the crescent of the next month, then you have to stop the fasting. Then you have to uh, to kabirullah, meaning you have to celebrate the Eid. You have to say Allah Akbar, Allah is great, and you have to chant and you have to make zikr and what you do, celebrate the Eid. And then uh, talk about the dua. Then you have to uh, ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala whenever you are in difficulty, uh, even whenever you are in, in good time. You have to uh, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have to uh, pay attention to your religious responsibilities. That's all the uh, recited page this. of the <laughs> Okay. Concerning about your question, uh, I know that our viewers are not only Muslims and normally Muslims know about these things. But our not, for our non-Muslims, uh, it is good for them. Even in Guyana, fortunately, what I witnessed during these four or five years, uh, not like in, in uh, Pagwa or in Christmas or in uh, the different Eids in different uh, religious background the, all our uh, people here they know about they each know other, about each they other yeah. if you ask a Muslim what is Pagwa he they knows. can tell you if you uh, ask Muslim what about the, uh, Christian, Diwali, yeah. the, the Diwali or the Christmas they, know, they, they can even go in detail yeah. so similarly uh, the people uh, non-Muslims they know about the uh, Ramadan, Ramadan one uh, they know about the fasting even, they know about the Eid, even some of us, like we, you know, we talk about, uh, about uh, uh, in taxi or in uh, where you go on streets, people ask about oh, when the Eid day, <laughs> tomorrow the day you cited the moon, you are non-Muslim. So this is not a, a new thing uh, in Guyana, but some, some of them, they may not know in detail about the fasting. For them, I want to explain uh, what is fasting itself. Fasting is abstaining from food and drinks and as well as abstaining from sexual activities and few other things from dawn to dusk that is all about fasting so for a limited time you abstain from certain things despite of uh, many deeds in islam like prayer or pilgrimage or uh, charity zakat or these things you have to do something in those things Yes. But in fasting, you no need to do anything. You, you have to abstain away. from. You yes. stay away. You not. You know not. You you should uh, not do certain things. Yes. That is the fasting. Okay. So that's a, a, it. It promotes a resistance power. For from dawn to dusk, like around now nowadays, we have 14 hours. Mm -hmm. You abstain from even what is halal for you. So before, you could eat, you could drink, but now you you can't eat. You can't drink. So you're abstaining from eating and drinking and certain activities, meaning you're promoting uh, the strength, the resistance power within yourself that you can abstain from haram things in the rest of your life. That's a kind of exercise during the month. Okay. Yeah. And also it's a dietary system. And you know, see your bellies work hard for 11 months. You know, you need to give some rest for the belly. <laughs> so now it can uh, regain the strength okay. and you get rid of lots of diseases out of it. Now this is uh, uh, even proved 
in science that uh, fasting itself is very beneficial uh, even in, in terms of uh, uh, physically physical benefits of yeah. fasting is a vital mention so that is fasting no you no need to do anything but you need to abstain from certain things from from morning till the uh, evening that's ab all about the fasting okay and and you you talk a little bit about who 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 have to fast and who yeah. doesn't but tell us about you, you mentioned earlier who who don't the travelers and mm -hmm. the, the, sick. the sick and the very you know yeah. the elderly yeah the, but who has to yes the fasting is obligatory on all muslims who reach up to the puberty age like uh, around nine years for girls completion of nine years for girls and completion of 15 years for boys so that is uh, they must but uh, they need to be in uh, they're not supposed to be insane okay. so the person who is uh, who can understand and who can you know is not uh, who is sane and reach to puberty age mm -hmm. they have to fast so there are some exceptional cases so like the person automatically is accepted who is uh, a child is not reached to yes. uh, puberty yes. age but they can fast but it's not obligatory on them if they fast they will get reward but it's not obligatory on them they can escape easily like uh, for elderly people you can't resist but they are exceptional cases and also the traveler and uh, uh, the sick who can't resist and also the pregnant woman who uh, if, if it is a danger for their health or their baby's health they no need to fast okay. and uh, the, the women who are nursing their babies the feeding they milk also so they also, ex also exceptional exactly. but they have to make it over once they finish their uh, yes. uh, period right okay. so these are the people who are exception from fasting but the people who are like uh, elderly and uh, uh, they can't make it over they need to pay a little bit charity yes. for each uh, fasting but the others they don't need to pay in charity or they need to pay, pay a penalty but they have to make it over after the month of ramadan that's uh, uh, the categories which is fixed rest of the these these exceptional cases the all muslim without any excuse they have to keep fast it's not that uh, uh, it is uh, it has been seen in uh, if we are not uh, some some muslims if they are not able to wake up early in the morning to eat something in the suhu, as a suhoor before the mm -hmm. uh, morning prayer uh, fajr uh, they they think that they didn't they don't need to fast no it's not like that the eating suhoor which is a meal before fajr is not obligatory it is recommended okay. but if you skip still you have to fast yes. you have to fast until uh, the evening Maybe. so you can't skip during the month of after. ramadan yeah after evening so yeah. what happens now for for those people who who, who are not aware who do not know so you talk about the morning meal so you have one there that you say it's not obligatory but it's recommended it's recommended so that can be able to you know take you through maybe mm -hmm. enough of the day but what happens after six o'clock when that meal is still? It's not six o'clock. Oh no, it's a, yeah, the hour. I'm just depends. Long yeah. nowadays, normally it's a four thirty now. Okay. Yeah, before four thirty, you have to finish your eating and, and drinking whatever, yeah. right? So, uh, it's, uh, meaning if you skip that, it doesn't mean that you have to skip fasting. Okay. Still, you have to go fast. through the fast. Okay. Um, tell us a little bit about about the cultural aspect of of the of the Muslim or the religion, mm -hmm. but from from Bharat or from India to Guyana um, a little a bit about our program on our program explaining to the, the cultural aspect because phil philosophically going into the Holy Quran and talking about the what what the, the Prophet said um, you know and these things which we're explaining here and our brother Akid re read just now a little bit of the cultural yes. aspect as it relates to the garment you know mm -hmm. how does how has the culture affected the Caribbean or effect of the Caribbean in what ways and so on? Islamic way of life uh, describing everything every aspect of your life you you have to do what and you should not do what it's mentioned like it's mentioned how you have to go toilet and how you have to clean yourself after doing toilet yes and it's mentioned how you have to deal with your neighboring countries how uh, politically how you have to appear financially how you have to maintain everything is mentioned like even what to eat what not to eat yes how to eat that's uh, mentioned everything mentioned so mm -hmm. they are muslim way of life you no need to wait that you have to find out something how to run your life everything is prescribed that you need to follow that's it yes that's the way of life so there are common things like in islam whether you are in guyana or in caribbean 
are in, in uh, North America, are in India, are in Europe, yeah, anywhere. Yeah, yeah. You have to do same thing what others doing. Exactly. So it's not exempted. Like you are in Caribbean, you do different than Muslims <laughs> in India. So there are common things which uh, the Islamic thing, Islamic law. So that never differs being in no different way. countries. Yeah. But there are some cultural aspects that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in fact in Islam, allowed. You can explore. like. Wearing kimar is not uh, uh, something which is uh, prescribed in Islam, you know. You have to hide, you have to cover yourself, it's prescribed. So how you cover? You wear kimar or you wear veil, we call chatter mm -hmm. in some yes. countries. It, it doesn't spoke about that. So it depends upon your culture. So if you are comfortable with veil, you go ahead. If you are comfortable with kimar, you go ahead. So it is mentioned what to cover. And expect uh, ex uh, and who would have to cover? Yeah, the, the ladies. Mm -hmm. The ladies uh, should cover even the, the, the hijab. Hijab is a uh, is a our time not allowing much to discuss about hijab. Hijab is in fact for gents and ladies both. So in Islam spoke in Quran in the chapter uh, Nur. It's 24 chapter. It's mentioned clearly uh, for what is the hijab of a man and what is the hijab of women. Mm -hmm. yeah. So men they have to lower their gaze. They should not. Uh, 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 look on the uh, ladies in that intention. In th with that intention, yes. that is uh, uh, a hijab. Hijab, okay. and hijab of a woman, they have to uh, accept uh, accept the face and the hands up to here. They should cover all their all parts of their body. And, and unfortunately, some of our sisters mistaken that uh, any kind of uh, dress they can wear it. No, some some women they wear very tight clothes which even you're wearing hijab but still you are disclosing everything <laughs> so that is not recommended uh, that is not prescribed in Islam what mm -hmm. prescribed is you have to cover yourself mm -hmm. that you look decent okay. you look different that is hijab so all women should wear except the, if they close relatives like the, with their uh, parents uh, their brothers and their uncles they can uh, be free with them yes but apart from them they have to cover that is the hijab Okay. In, in particularly, uh, you see, the, uh, 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 other than the month of Ramadan, normally Muslims are not that much uh, religious, but they have to. Mm -hmm. But normally it's, it's a cultural thing, you know. But in the month of Ramadan, you see normally the women wear, uh, they pay more attention to the, ki the yes, hijab yes. and they pay more attention to their religious uh, responsibilities. Mm -hmm. That's how it you are seen in, in Guyana. You see, yeah. the, they are more religious in the month of Ramadan. And that itself may be a blessing. It's mentioned in one of the hadiths by our noble Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says that uh, uh, in the month of Ramadan, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala opened the doors of paradise and closed the doors of hellfire and imprisoned the shaitan, meaning there is none to whisper you. So you have to decide. You are free now. You are better. It's a blessing month. So you are more uh, involved in your religious activities and uh, there is nothing outsider to disturb you. So you will make decision. Yeah. So that's uh, how the month uh, will benef benefit from the month of Ramadan. Okay. A bit on, a bit on uh, the, the title given to the persons in Islam. Um, I know, it, you know, Christian Christianity, you say priest or and different different religion. You have, you have the pundits in the mm -hmm. Hindu um, uh, as it relates to your title when I when I introduce you, Maulana, mm -hmm. Sayyid, Muhammad, mm -hmm. Tasdeeq. Um, there are there are other titles given to other people. So I want to touch on this a little bit because in Guyana sometimes we get you know caught up. You hear a Maulana, you, you listen to him, then you hear we talk them with the Meiji here, and you have other titles. Can you okay. explain these a little okay. bit for us? Uh, for us? Yeah, here the Maulana is a famous word. Maulana is a root word is the Vilaya, meaning uh, uh, guardian. So Maulana is a guardian. Maulana means our guardian, right? Okay. So guardian who look after the religious affairs of the Muslims. Mm -hmm. That is the Maulana in yes. fact. But here we have, uh, you may hear the Mufti. Mufti is a root word, is a fatwa, meaning uh, the one who issue the verdict on Islamic issues. That is called Mufti. Mm -hmm. uh, we have here, I heard only here in Caribbean that the Meiji. Mm -hmm. Meiji is not uh, popular in uh, uh, Eastern countries. You know. Meiji here maybe because of the, uh, uh, the, the some Language. of our our uh, maulanas and some of our imams they used to do the jari and they used to uh, you know solve their 
little uh, psychological problems. That's why they made the given title as a Meiji. <laughs> they made some magic and something. <laughs> I don't know much okay. about this. But this word I heard only here. Okay. It's not uh, oracle there. It's not the famous there. We have another one, Imam. Imam is a leader. Normally, who lead the prayer is an Imam. As well as who lead the society this is, is an Imam. Masjid. Or general. In a must anywhere, in the village, anywhere, in the community. anywhere, anywhere. Mm -hmm. See here in Islam, the beauty of Islam is, if you pray in masjid, also that's prayer. Mm -hmm. You are a traveler, you are on the streets, you can pray on the streets. Yes. You can pray anywhere. It's if time not permit you to go to masjid and pray, then wherever you are, you have to pray. So if you pray individual, that is an individual prayer. Mm -hmm. If you pray two person, one one person is uh, uh, leading, another one is following. Is that is called the congregational prayer. Mm -hmm. So that is called Imam, the Imam one who is leading, leading, the one who is following is called Ma'mu, right? This is the, uh, in Islamic term, Imam. Mm -hmm. But Imam, we have been, Imam is a, as in the, the, literally mean the leader, meaning who lead the society. Yeah. So normally here, because it's not an Islamic country, so the leader is not necessary to be Imam yes. here. Yeah. Uh, but you know, in Islamic countries, normally you may hear the Imam, Ulil uh, Amr, meaning he is the one who make decision in the country. So okay. he is the leader of our country. So also we have, uh, uh, like in Iran, you Sheik? See, yeah, Sheik, Sheik here is famous. Sheik is, uh, is one who is a learner. Sheik, normally it is Sheik in Arabic is a aged. The one who is aged, that is called Sheik. Uh -huh. But now here because of the, the learned person, more, more experienced person, they will call Sheik. Sheik. And also we have, uh, uh, in Iran if you go, they will call Ayatollah. You may hear the Ayatollah yes, Khomeini, yes, word, right? Yes, I heard. So Ayatollah meaning, uh, Ayatullah meaning the sign of Allah. Meaning if, if he talks something, meaning it is a sign of Allah. So he, he diluted himself into religion, into Allah, that he never speak by himself. He speaks on behalf of Allah. So that is called Ayatollah. But how does this happen? How does this transition happen? Or how does this in any religion, in any culture, you may have uh, similar things, you know. So in, 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 in India, we have in uh, uh, seminaries, Islamic seminaries. They we call Hawza, mm -hmm. the Madrasa, or you call Darul Ulum, something yes, like that. Yes. So you go to the like, Alim course, you, you finish the Alim course, then you go Maulana, then you go Sheikh, then, then you go Mufti, something like that. Oh, so, so they have different uh, uh, levels. levels of uh, education, Islamic education. That's how it uh, became famous. Okay, and um, so basically, all all that you are hearing this afternoon, viewers, and I just want to just um, you know, of course, tell you that on our program featured here, Indian Arts and Culture, Ramadan special this month, I'm um, talking about Ramadan for those of you who just joined. This is our our um, brother here, Molana Said Muhammad Azdiq from the Bangalore, and his his son here, Said Muhammad Akil from Bangalore also but um, I, I don't know how long they're staying in Guyana for or how, or what, what's their stint here but I'm quite sure that the information so far you know the discussion not getting into the the holy book or the holy Quran you know in depth but tell us a little bit about the, the cultural relation um, as it relates to one thing it was one thing our, our in our country that people always question and people always see different maybe you go to one area of one society you see it different you go to another area or maybe another masjid and you see it different and you maybe to tune into your television in the morning and you see it different it's music mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how is how does music operate in the in the muslim religion okay. because some places you will find like our brother he he can recite without any music at all mm -hmm. and then some other time i see another little brother like him you know singing with the tabla yeah, and the sense. harmonium and so how does this work the music in Islam, we have difference of opinion, okay. in, uh, like uh, in other issues also. In mm -hmm. any religion, you may have find the difference of opinion. Yes. So that is uh, in Islam, it is mentioned the, the beautiful hadith by our prophet that the love of ummati rahmah, and difference of opinion in our nation itself is a blessing. Meaning you can, you can explore many things, mm -hmm. right? That difference is okay. Yeah. But the difference in opinion is okay, but different action is not so okay, you know. <laughs> in action, we should not call each other. Okay. So that we, we promote unity. Okay. So the unity is a is a is a one of the uh, very strongest recommendations in Islam. Mm -hmm. So we should not give up. Meantime, we have a, a difference of opinion, but same time we have to unite. Unite. We have to respect each okay. other's uh, views, and yeah. we have to understand, and we have to tolerate. Yeah. So in terms of music, we have lots of difference of opinion. Like some allows. This is a basic thing. That is a formula that the music, which 
uh, makes you intoxicated like makes you unconscious makes you something vibrant that you, you lose your conscious like you saw some some people like if they play music they, they do some action yeah, yeah. that it's not uh, intentionally they're doing it because of the music they lose and yeah. they act uh, their body differently. differently so that is definitely haram <laughs> that is not allowed in yeah, Islam. That is so that is there is no difference of opinion in that, in that but we have uh, light music like using tabla and light things we have different some say that it's okay the music which not promote the intoxication in you like m not harms your my mind that's okay you can promote that mm -hmm. but some they resist no all kinds of music is haram so we can't pay attention to the music okay. so it's better to stay, stay away. away so those who are because, stay away from any kind of music they're not losing anything you know okay it's okay so music is not obligatory uh -huh. it's not something which essential but uh, because the moderators, yeah. those who understand the uh, necessity of the society and also those who understand the religious background, they allow people, those who are uh, not uh, spiritually high, those who are not up to, up to that level, as I mentioned, the criteria, mm. within that level, they can enjoy the music, mm. but not more than that. We have uh, like Ghazali, Imam Ghazali and uh, Ibn Sina and many scholars in uh, Islam, in Islam, they wrote uh, uh, even the book about the music so okay. what is the music at what extent because we can use it what, what we cannot use it and it's mentioned yeah, yeah. words and words. especially the Indian music yeah. is normally it is uh, uh, it's not uh, vulgar you know no 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 uh, that's why it's, uh, I don't think uh, the lyrics are meaningful sometimes yeah, you meaningful know there's only yes. they can even teach you things if you actually understand what they're saying because in, in the in the using the the Arabic the word the, the language you'll find Ghazals and, and, and Kawalis and so on, mm -hmm. which in our festivities here in Guyana when we celebrate Indian arrival and other other events, we would use such music as a part of celebration and these things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, all, all of the livelihoods. Let me tell you this thing, very important thing. Uh, Islam came to Guyana through the Sufism, you know. Mm -hmm. the, the impact of Sufism in Guyana is vital. Even now you see the Zikr groups in different areas, yes. that is the part of Sufism. Yeah. Meaning, uh, you cannot take away these things from the Islamic culture. No. So this is the, this became a part of Islamic culture now. So the Qawwali and, and the Ghazals yeah. are became, if once it is not exhibited, some, you know, in any, in any cases you may, you may die, deviate from the original aspect, you know. Yeah. Like uh, in Ghazals also, there are some vulgar Ghazals, so that we, Islam is not recommended that one. But in normal Ghazals, yes. which promote uh, spirituality harmony, within you, uh, peace. Uh, harmony, peace, that's, it's not, it's we don't have problem in Islam. Great. Um, anyways, um, to our viewers out there, I think this afternoon, speaking about fasting, going a little bit about the culture, talking a little bit about the, the, the month itself and what you have to do, what you don't have to do, who are exempted, who are not. All of these things this afternoon we've discussed on our program here, Indian Arts and Culture, and I would like to take the opportunity here now because we're about to close off our program to thank our little brother here, Saeed Muhammad Akid, and I'm, I'm hoping I get his name right all the time because he, he always do this to me, so I'm quite sure I got his name right, <laughs> and Maulana Saeed Muhammad Tazdi for being on our program this afternoon, spending half an hour with you in your homes, talking a little bit about Ramadan, and telling you of course he you know briefly explain the basics I would, I would want to call that the basics because you need yes. more than hours and of more than days in the viewers <laughs> like what we have in different cultures yeah. and different uh, backgrounds I can't go in detail in yeah. philosophy <laughs> of uh, the fasting and philosophy of I know it's, it's a bit too much it's, 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 it needs its own place, place yes. exactly and I'm quite sure that all the Muslims out there you know what you have to do in the month of Ramadan but these moments that we take to come to you on the television to speak to you are just moments of reminder of certain things that you have to do and certain things that you don't have to do so with that in mind i wish all our muslim brothers and sisters out there um uh, uh, successful if i want to call it the word successful ramadan that you carry out your fasting properly and also the non-muslims out there who are there you can also learn from this from this type of um, activities these types of, of events and these types of um this this from this culture itself and the religion itself of some importance all all cultures out there that is why our program focus on not just one but all cultures out there they have something to share with us and that is when he said in Guyana he's telling me earlier on the road he talked on the television on the road somebody can come and say hey man when when is Eid 
so all in Guyana we learn from all and we know all and we are living all every day in our life so let nobody tell you differently we can't escape that Guyana is is a multicultural society we have to we have to exist in that we have to live in that and some give and take happens sometimes but at the end of the day we are one people one nation and one destiny so that is our motto and we have to stick to that so thanks again Molana thanks again Akir and we will t see you next week Saturday as we come again live or maybe sometimes recorded from the studio of MTV we also like to thank MTV for this time to allow us this time on the air and all, all, all viewers out there thank you very much for tuning in our email address is on the screen our phone numbers are on the screen the office is up and running at Cummins Lodge that is the IAC office so drop in there anytime and you know you can give your suggestions you can share ideas with us and we are there we are very open email us any ideas you have check out our Facebook page and you can share comments and share your thoughts with us and we'll be able to to facilitate them thank you and you have a great weekend